Hello again from Digicore Things. You may recall that in my previous 6809 CPU card video, I discovered a flaw with the originally intended external clock generator circuit. Therefore, in that video we designed a replacement clock generator circuit and verified its operation on a breadboard. And finally completed verification of the original prototype PCB by linking across the replacement clock generator to the original PCB. Since then, I've updated the CPU card schematic and PCB layout to a hopefully final version 2.2 and ordered the updated prototype PCBs. The new PCBs have now arrived, so in this update video I'll go through the changes to the schematic and PCB layout and then we'll build and test the first version 2.2 6809 CPU card PCB. Let's start by reviewing the schematic changes. OK, so here's the full schematic. If we zoom in to the clock generator circuit, you can see it has been updated to now use the 74HCT73 JK flip-flop. As the 74HCT73 comes in a 14-pin package, instead of the 16 pins for the old flip-flop, it gives us a little more PCB space. So I also took the opportunity to add another 100 nanofarad bypass capacitor, which will be dedicated to smoothing the power routing for the clock circuit. OK, let's zoom in to the resistor bank for the CPU pull-ups. As you can see, I've updated the schematic to specify a 4.7k resistor bank for the CPU pull-ups, instead of the previous 10k resistor bank. This was prompted by some test results in my previous video, covering retro CPU interrupts. So now let's take a look at the PCB layout changes. Here's the full PCB layout. If we zoom into the clock circuitry, you can see I've moved the crystal oscillator over a little to make room for the new bypass capacitor between the oscillator and the new 14 pin 74HCT73 flip-flop. The power feed is then routed to this capacitor and then on to the oscillator and flip-flop, providing additional smoothing of the switching noise from the clock signal. In addition, I've moved the 6809E only silkscreen message to now sit outside the flip-flop's IC socket, so it remains readable when the 74HCT73 chip is inserted. And that's basically it for the version 2.2 PCB. So let's take a look at our delivery from JLC PCB. Okay, we have our new version 2.2 PCBs. Let's take one out and have a closer look. Let's move the box out of the way. And let's take a look. Okay, that's the component side. Looks good. And let's flip it over. There's the solder side. Okay, I think it looks great. So let's get one assembled. For assembly, I started off with the bypass capacitors and the two single inline resistor packs, noting that the resistor pack next to the CPU is 4.7k. The other resistor pack can be either 10k or 4.7k. I've used 10k. Then I soldered in the IC sockets, including the 8 pin IC socket that I've modified for the crystal oscillator, as explained in earlier videos. I then also soldered in the 2 pin headers for the ROM write enable in the 6809 selection. Then the 8 way dual and line switch and the momentary switch for the reset. Finally, the male DIN 41612 MECB bus connector, which is secured in place with a couple of 10mm M2.5 bolts. With the board assembly completed, it's time to get some ICs inserted. 
As we already have tested known good ICs on the prior prototype 6809 CPU card, I'll just move these over. Firstly, the 74HCT688 8-bit comparator. Then the 64K static RAM. And then our internally clocked 6809 CPU chip. Also, the TC1232 8 pin reset chip. Next, the 4 MHz oscillator to run the CPU at 1 MHz. As we did last time, I'll initially leave the clock generated chip uninstalled. So we'll first test the version 2.2 card with an original internal clock 6809 CPU. So I'll also insert the 6809 jumper to feed the crystal oscillator clock directly to the internal clock 6809 CPU. Finally, I'll just move across the programmed PLD and ROM chips, which we had previously used for configuring and testing the earlier CPU card. With the version 2.2 CPU card ready to go, we can now insert it into our black plane alongside the TMS9929 video card for its first test. Now let's connect power Turn it on and see what we get. And as expected, we have the same successful video display test output. So we have version 2.2 CPU card success with using an internal clock 6809 chip, replicating the success of the earlier version 2 and version 1 prototypes. Now to try the new CPU card configured for the more common 6809E external clock CPU. OK, let's switch off and remove the CPU card again. And we'll get this old CPU card out of the way. Right, first we'll take out the internal clock CPU. And also remove the jumper. Then we'll insert the new 74HCT73 JK flip flop chip. For the external quadrature clock generator. 
Finally, we'll insert the same Hitachi 6309E external clock CPU which we had earlier used when testing our version 2 card. Right, so we should now be ready to go for an external clock CPU test. Let's put the CPU card back in the back plane. And again, apply power and see if we have external clock success. And we're looking good. So we finally have success with our version 2.2 or 6809E CPU card. The 6809 CPU card has been a long journey. First with a successful version 1, which was based on my existing 80 stock of internal clock 6809 CPUs, then discovering that internal clock 6809 chips were now hard to find. With several ordered batches of internal 6809 and 6309 chips turning out to actually be 6809E variants that have been wrongly remarked as internal clock versions. This then led me to wanting to redesign the 6809 CPU card to support either internal or external clock variants. This resulted in my version 2 6809 CPU card, which then unfortunately was a failure, as the published external clock circuit I'd used did not function as I'd expected. This was also a good reminder lesson that this type of circuit function should first be verified on breadboard before proceeding to PCB layer. Finally, we have a successfully tested revised version 2.2 CPU card, delivering on my desire to support either internal or external clock variants of either the Motorola 6809 or the Hitachi 6309 CPUs. Now that I'm finally happy with our 6809 CPU card, we can focus on my first I.O. card, the design of which has now been completed, following on from my last two videos covering some of the design decisions. And the first prototype I.O. card PCBs are now currently on their way from JLC PCB. As soon as they arrive, I'll be back to present my first Motorola-based I.O. card design. Until then. That's it. Thanks for watching.